Hello, everybody, and uh, uh, thanks for hosting me in this great conference. My name is Pasquale Balsebra, and today uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, my work uh, titled uh, Geospatial Entity Resolution, which is in collaboration with uh, my co authors, uh, the John Giao, uh, Gao Tong, and Zen uh, This work is partly funded by NTU and partly by uh, Alibaba. So as the title says, uh, we are talking about uh, geospatial uh, databases, which are uh, nowadays at the core of most uh, web applications. You can think of uh, Foursquare, which is a location-based social network, or eHelp, which is a review-based uh, social network. But also traditional uh, socials like Twitter or Instagram uh, are heavily based on a, a geospatial database. So any application uh, that wants to use uh, this kind of data uh, needs to um, needs to uh, uh, to join uh, different sources since each sources uh, usually uh, has only partial coverage of the data. This is due uh, because, for example, on Foursquare, uh, not every uh, business is registered, or in OSM, uh, volunteers uh, didn't annotate uh, every possible every existing uh, geospatial object. So uh, when um, when an application uh, decided uh, to uh, join uh, geospatial uh, databases, the duplication is needed uh, to have a, a high quality result. In this case, uh, the duplication uh, means uh, recognizing when uh, two entities in uh, two different databases refer to the same real world entity. In this case, entity uh, obviously refer to a point of interest uh, in the geospatial field. As you can see in the picture, uh, we see two uh, Starbucks, which are uh, two um, entities. The blue one refers to Yelp, the red one to Foursquare. So they have the same name, but we want to understand if in the real world they are uh, the same entity or two different uh, Starbucks. Even if their position is not the same, uh, is not exactly the same, uh, they may still be uh, the same entity because uh, the position, the locations are recorded in the real world. So they are uh, often uh, not very accurate. So uh, another example that uh, shows uh, better the challenges of this work is depicted in this figure. As you can see, um, if we try to match uh, wine and spirits with uh, fine wine and good spirits in the first example, uh, which is uh, which actually correspond to the same real world entity, uh, string similarities are not very useful since uh, the two names uh, have uh, a string similarity that is not that high. In the second example, instead, we see the opposite, uh, Mitchell's dinner and Michelle's dinner. The string similarity is very high, but the names are different. This calls, of course, for a solution that can uh, pay different attention to different words. So we need uh, that uh, each word uh, play, uh, plays a different role uh, in the context. The last example, instead, we see two uh, Starbucks POI which have, of course, the same name and are very close in uh, position, but uh, uh, they do not correspond to the same entity. And this can be um, predicted, inferred, only uh, seeing at the neighborhood um, uh, at the neighborhood of the two POIs. So these two POIs, first of all, are uh, located in the Orchard Road uh, district, which is a very uh, high density district in Singapore. And secondly, as we all know, uh, they are um, a very famous uh, chain of POIs. So it's reasonable to have two POIs named Starbucks in the same, uh, in a very close, uh, very close, uh, close by from one another, rather than, for example, a unique uh, a POI with a unique name that is more likely to, to match. So to summarize, uh, the main challenges are that uh, to solve, uh, to uh, make it automatic um, integration of just special data, first of all, we need uh, language modeling techniques. We need to include the distance information uh, in the learning framework. And we also want to try to leverage uh, the contextual information uh, from the neighborhood. So to give a quick pass to uh, related work, we can see that uh, traditional entity resolution uh, state-of-the-art algorithm are uh, highly uh, dominated by uh, pre-trained language models, as is uh, witnessed by DITO and uh, Joint BERT. Instead, for just special entity matching solution, they still heavily rely on the word similarity measures 
and uh, uh, human designed rules for the ge geographical part. Um, human design rules are, first of all, uh, quite expensive, but they also um, are not, uh, in most of the cases, uh, they cannot be integrated in a learning framework. So to solve the aforementioned challenges, uh, we propose uh, the, uh, our algorithm called uh, GeoER, which is divided in two phases. The first one is blocking and the second is matching. Blocking is a very common phase in uh, entity resolution. It basically tries to speed up the algorithm because uh, um, a naive approach would be to compare every possible uh, entry in the first database with each entry, entry in the second database. This will be uh, computationally too expensive, uh, especially if we use a very heavy uh, deep learning algorithm. So um, the blocking phase uh, aims to use a very quick and simple rule just to select uh, likely candidates, so maximizing the recall. And, uh, um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty fast. In this example, uh, as you can see, the, we have three entities in the first database and three in the second. So the, a full Cartesian product would uh, produce uh, nine candidates. Instead, uh, the blocking phase um, uh, produces just uh, three candidates that, uh, three couples of candidates that are the ones highlighted with the uh, arrows. So uh, the blocking rule uh, that, we, uh, that we design depends mostly on, uh, depends only on uh, name similarity and uh, um, geospatial uh, distance. So as you may understand, we don't even need to design a, um, a policy for uh, negative sampling because uh, we simply take each entity from the first database and search for possible candidates in the second. So candidates that have a, a similar name and are close by in space. And uh, we check in the ground route if they are uh, labeled as one. If they are not present in the ground route, we uh, just label them as zero and we include them in the database as uh, uh, negative samples. So each negative sample, as you may understand, will be quite informative and hard to classify since uh, all of them will be close and also similar, um, have a similar name. For what it concerns the um, matching model, it is divided in three main components. The first one is a transformer-based language model. The second one is a distance embedding component. And the third one uh, aims to uh, capture a neighborhood attention. So uh, the first one is probably uh, very familiar with you, is a language model uh, for attributes matching. So we use uh, BERT, which is the pre-trained language model that best performed in our experiments to uh, compare the two entities uh, with the, to compare the textual attributes of the two entities, uh, namely the name, the address, and the, uh, uh, and the zip code. So uh, the, in the final layer, BERT produces uh, very highly contextualized uh, word embeddings, but we extract only the uh, CLS uh, token, which is a special token used by BERT for, uh, for classification. The second uh, component is quite simple, but uh, also extremely powerful. Uh, we simply uh, compute the distance between the two PIs using Heverstein formula. We scale it to be a number between minus one and one, and we uh, embed it, uh, multiplying this number uh, for a fixed size uh, array of learnable parameters. The third component, uh, which is quite novel in the field, is uh, called a uh, neighborhood attention. So uh, it gives important information about the district and the POI itself, as I introduced before. So we use uh, the graph attention network uh, to learn to attend important neighbors. So we simply uh, first uh, transform each entity um, in, a, in an embedding, which is not uh, initialized randomly, but using BERT to have an initial uh, meaningful embedding. We concatenate the first, um, the first entity with each one of its neighbors, one by one, and we compute an unnormalized uh, attention score, multiplying this concatenation uh, with a, using a dot product of this concatenation uh, with a, a vector of learnable parameters. We then apply softmax and we compute the, um, the neighborhood embedding, uh, which is the weighted sum of each neighbor um, where weighted means uh, each neighbor is, uh, uh, is multiplied by its attention score. So we compute this um, neighborhood attention for uh, both the, the two entities that we are trying to compare. 
We also uh, further improve this schema, uh, encouraging the model uh, to pay more attention to closer neighbors. So uh, the attention uh, after this uh, modification does not only depend on uh, semantic similarity, but uh, we add uh, an attention bias, which depends on a learnable parameter fee, and also uh, which is multiplied by one over uh, the distance between i and j. So where i is the central entity and j is each of the neighbors. In this way, the model is encouraged to uh, pay more attention if the distance is short between uh, each entity and uh, each neighbors. So the three components output are uh, concatenated and a linear layer is applied to obtain the final prediction. We optimize the GOER um, using cross-entropy loss between the inferred prediction and the ground truth. Uh, it's a binary cross-entropy since the two classes can be only zero or one, uh, match or no match. And we use a Adam optimizer with a linearly decreasing learning rate schedule and a batch size of 32. Uh, we evaluate our algorithm on uh, eight real-world datasets from four different cities and three sources. Uh, as you can see, uh, we join uh, OSM with Foursquare and OSM with Yelp and select four uh, cities. And uh, um, the last column in this table uh, shows the percentage of a positive sample for each uh, dataset. We compare uh, GeoER with state-of-the-art solution in uh, entity resolution and geospatial entity resolution, namely uh, DeepMatcher, Ditto, uh, and uh, SkyX. So as you can see from the results, uh, the improvements uh, range from a minimum of 2.7% up to 7.2% uh, in uh, terms of F1 scores. And we also uh, compute an um, ablation study uh, to show the performance of each of the components. So as expected, the distance embedding components, even being uh, quite simple, uh, leads to the, um, carries the best uh, average improvement uh, of 3.3% uh, uh, F1 score, uh, points of F1 score uh, on average. And, uh, but also the neighborhood embedding uh, can uh, improve the results uh, quite significantly. Um, exactly 1.7% on average uh, across the eight uh, data sets. Okay, that's it for my presentation. If you have uh, any question, I'm happy to uh, answer. Yeah, thanks um, for the speaker. And um, is there any question? Uh, maybe I just want to have one quick question. Like, um, you are using the uh, uh, graph attention network. Like, yeah, I, I'm just curious. Like, um, have you tried any other uh, GM method to aggregate this kind of information? Um, uh, no, not really. Uh, we um, the, the idea was to use uh, graph attention from the beginning because uh, not every neighbor uh, has the same importance. So we really focused on a way to pay different attention to to different neighbors. Mm 